Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Today, me and Dave are joined by Kevin L. Johnson, who was just in the newest season of Stranger Things and Ozark. Um, be sure to check him out in Florida, man. It's a new series coming out. More details to come. He talks about that a little bit on the show. We talk Serpico from 1973 with Al Pacino, directed by Sidney Lumet. Uh, before we get, uh, into the episode, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, rate and review us, give us that five-star review to help us to continue to grow on those charts. Uh, we are on YouTube too. Uh, our numbers are huge on audio, but, uh, we're trying to get those YouTube, YouTube numbers up as well. So hit that subscribe button notifications. I don't know. What do YouTubers say? I don't know. Just do, just do, do do the thing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, give us that. Follow us on Twitter at blockbuster cast, Instagram at blockbuster mentality, and find out what celebrities we're talking to go to blockbuster mentality.com. Uh, talk to a lot of celebrities, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do. But, uh, had a great time talking with Kevin. Second time he's been on the show. Second Al Pacino film he's uh, chosen, second Sidney Lumet film he's chosen. We talked about uh, Dog Day Afternoon last time he was on, one of our first guests once we started to be a guest-driven show, so so happy he was uh, able to come back and talk movies with us. So here is our conversation with Kevin L. Johnson. Last time we were talking... um, learning to play guitar did you did that ever uh did, what, what would happen with that if i moved that guitar there's probably like a dust <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guitar outline <laughs> yeah it, it happens you know you get ambitious at first and then you're you know just like it looks nice though it does <laughs> Right? It, <laughs> it does. Looks beautiful. That's, that's what I mean. We both got ours, you know. So look at this. Look at the trio with our with our. Oh, that's guitars. right. We did talk about that. That's right. We did talk about guitars, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't pretend like I knew anything about guitars. <laughs> no, no. Did. You were okay. you were trying to learn. I think was the, was the conversation. <laughs> so, uh, and so yeah, you, you're you still have not learned. So that we know that. So that's good. Last time we had a big memorabilia reveal. Do you have any surprises for us tonight? Oh, uh, oh, that's right. I had the dog day afternoon thing, didn't? Or wait, did I show? Was it dog day afternoon, or was it a? Uh, it was a playbill for uh, this uh, uh, El Pacino like uh, program, a play in the park yeah. or something. Oh yeah, um, I can't remember. <laughs> does this? Does any of this look familiar in the background? Do you guys remember any of that? A little bit. That, the artwork yeah. might look new. I don't know. Because okay. <laughs> my room was pretty. Uh, like an insane asylum like at one point and during the pandemic i just i said i gotta do something <laughs> but the guitar was already up though right yeah, the guitar yeah, the, was there yeah. the guitar okay was there. so yes okay so i think everything else was there too then um yeah. and nothing I don't, yeah you don't have to show okay. anything no yeah, yeah. I, don't, it's just just you had, I don't know if you had yeah. any surprises for us or not but <laughs> I, I got the al pacino dog day afternoon uh like poster like the um like the movie poster framed, but I feel like if I take that down, I'm going to, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. The uh, Dave, Dave will live. He, he'll live. Don't, uh, don't well, you've been busy, him. Kevin. It feels like you're always on my TV. Uh, because we, we, my wife and I finished Ozark not too long ago. And just recently we went through, uh, this first part of stranger things season four. Well done by you. Uh, that's Thank awesome, you. man. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Been, yeah busy guy that's for sure what uh um it is all your did you film is ozark film in atlanta uh yeah mm-hmm. and filmed, so stranger uh, things mm-hmm. so Same. everything films yeah. in atlanta not hollywood that's uh <laughs> Pretty, i mean you know when i say like oh like whatever you've watched on tv it probably films here i mean i'm yeah. exaggerating but yeah it's almost true yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure uh, is, is there any hope for Sam? Is he going to, he, he went off with that church group. Is he going to be okay? It seemed like he was just walking into another thing, but at least it wasn't the birds. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, 
people are like, oh, he had a nice little ending. But then when you think about it, did he? I don't know. No. <laughs> He's going into a cult. I mean, yeah. <laughs> or, does, or is he just wanting to get laid? Who knows? Like, maybe yeah. he thinks Annalise, you know, looks a lot like Wendy. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, I was listening a little bit to uh, uh, our buddies uh, over at Apple Teenies with uh, Ken and Dan. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they you guys brought up that point. They, the blonde thing, like, is he yeah, kind of going to, like, is that like his, his thing? Like, you know, is that his comfort uh, type of thing? And I mean, you got Ruth who's blonde and all that. So he oh, obviously, yeah. you know, has that sort of thing going for him i think but yeah it, it, to me it, i agree and it, uh, it, it, it definitely it came across on the show which is is good which is that it looked like maybe he was going to be preyed upon um <laughs> but at least he probably was going to live right <laughs> like, yeah his life wasn't in danger <laughs> not um, not uh not physically i guess yeah, yeah exactly. mentally he was probably screwed yeah a little <laughs> little brainwashed you know i mean you're uh how, how is how is acting um when you're getting baptized how how like is that like a <laughs> did i really just get baptized or do i i know? asked that same question i was like does this count because, <laughs> i mean i haven't been baptized is it does this count just in case something is after this? <laughs> right you know, just to cover your bases. Yeah, exactly. Like you're at the pearly gates, and like, well, I did it for you know the show. So. I said the words. I said yeah. the words, and, and I, she and I think she was ordained. Don't you have to wait? Doesn't doesn't she have to be ordained? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think that was just uh, being a human makes you ordained at the, this point. I, I I don't know, but yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> um you uh last time we spoke too you, you alluded to having a project coming up and uh, we, it, you know it was obvious that it was uh stranger things now at that point when did you find out that you were going to be and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen uh stranger things yet but um and uh, i haven't even finished the season yet so spoiler alert for me too but um uh when was it revealed to you that you were pl pl playing a younger version of Robert England? Um, I knew that uh, when they were um, fitting me for my wardrobe, they okay. told me that. So yeah. you had gotten the part, you had no idea, and then when you you were getting fitted and everything, that's when you found out. Oh, I'm I'm the younger version of Freddy Krueger. Yeah, it was um it was interesting because uh, when I got the breakdown it said they were looking for a young bill Maher. Okay. So it was, which is also could be a young Robert England. So it was another way of kind of hiding, mm. you know, so I was like, Oh, is bill Maher going to be in stranger things? Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That so, would be, <laughs> yeah. but I guess yeah. that was a way to make it even more, you know, hidden what, what they were going to do because they're so secretive on that show. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. even want the person who's auditioning for the role to know that they're actually auditioning for a young Robert England. So they're like, who does Robert England look like? And we could say that. Yeah. Young yeah. Bill Maher. And I was like, do I look like a young Bill Maher? I, I, I don't it. know. I'll see it. But I mean, uh, now that when you mention it, I like, I can, I guess maybe see it a little, but I, I actually, I, I, for some reason i totally buy the robert england thing like I, did you I, I, did, I uh, yeah I, yeah yeah i thought that uh, was uh were I you honored it, yeah i didn't i didn't get to meet uh <laughs> i didn't get to meet him because um he was on set as i was uh, like like uh like i as i was getting there one day we were there at the same time but we didn't cross paths yeah okay yeah and uh he couldn't he couldn't see anyways if that makes any sense yeah i don't know how far you've yeah. got i've seen pictures so yeah uh, okay yeah. So, way okay. to spoil kevin gosh <laughs> damn it kevin <laughs> well, it's been out go. for a couple weeks now i think we're fine here <laughs> yeah exactly um because uh, have you finished it yet dave I have, yeah. This is great. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. just uh, and actually I think, I think it was I have a perfect three left or so. Huh? I think I have like four three or four left, but anyway, you were saying. But I think 
seeing you two together, say, um, uh, Kevin, it was perfect. Um, you know, it, it exactly looks. I mean, we, you know, like it's Robert England, and then um, like, oh yeah, he's got kind of like a makeup thing going on, and it is <laughs> it is perfect. You, you are the perfect like more innocent younger version of himself. You know, if that makes sense, rather than and he becomes this like grizzled old. Uh, you know, like yeah. w- wounded man, and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, curious, what's what's your what's your lead time on between the time you get a call to the point where you're fitted and knowing what what the hell you're even doing? Like, wow, what was oh, your God. how long were you waiting for all that? Oh man, um, it kind of depends on the project. Uh, I can't remember how long it was. Like when I booked it, and then got the wardrobe. Maybe like a week. Oh, okay. So not bad. Okay. So they weren't like keeping yeah. you. It wasn't like months or anything like that. Okay. I didn't have the sides uh, till like, I think on the day. Okay. Um, But I didn't really have to worry about dialogue. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Robert England was telling most of the story. So. Yeah. Your, your job was, was, was done <laughs> for you, which was nice, but no, that's awesome, man. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Continuing on that, uh, Netflix streak. What, uh, uh, do you have anything else on the, on the horizon before we get into the, into the film we're going to be speaking about? Um, yeah. Uh, there's a show called Florida man. Um, Oh yeah. That's coming out, uh, sometime this year. I was in a couple episodes. Um, and then uh, I got another project that I can't mention right now. Uh, that'll be on AMC. Um, so, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Another tease. <laughs> another <laughs> tease for us. <laughs> <laughs> like it. All right. Cool, man. Well, yeah, definitely. When does uh, Florida Man come out? Did you already say? Sorry. Uh, when does that come out? <laughs> There's no date yet, but okay. I would think... Uh, it's got to be soon, um, probably sometime in the fall, maybe. That's my guess. What type of uh, show is it? Other than being, is it a comedy? Because Florida Man, I always think just comedy, like people are making uh, fun of us Floridians, so which is always. well deserved. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, it's not a comedy. Um, they're keeping it kind of like kind of hush hush what it's okay. about yeah. but in the scripts they have like in between some of the scenes they have a uh, like news uh newscast gotcha so that's where the whole florida man thing comes into play and it also takes place in florida so yeah okay. yeah makes yeah. sense well, well we'll leave it at that yeah <laughs> well no no i have one more question about it though okay, was, one it, more? Okay. was it filmed in atlanta <laughs> It was. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that was filmed in North Carolina. Oh, North okay. Carolina. Well, yeah, well, it, so. yeah. See, not every show is in, uh, in Atlanta. In Come on, man. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I uh, definitely looking forward to that. And yeah, I'm so glad uh, you were, uh, willing to come back on, you know, we didn't scare you away too much, obviously, which is always, uh, good to hear from previous guests. Um, you know, last time we obviously spoke about, uh, 1975's dog day afternoon with El Pacino. Not only did it also star El Pacino directed by Cindy Lamette. Uh, Sid- Sydney Lamette. Um, and you say Cindy? I think I said that <laughs> at first. Different, yes. Cindy, yeah, Cindy is to- yeah, that's totally different. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Um, no problem. But uh, we we not only have another Pacino movie, but another Lamette movie. Yeah, I know, that. right? Two, two years uh, before, we're talking Serpico, 1973. Yeah. Um, so you get, you got a little bit of a Pacino thing going. Do you, do you, would you say you have a Lamette thing as well? Yeah. Yeah. Those, I mean, dog day afternoon and Serpico are, are two of my favorites. So yeah, he passed away a couple, a couple years ago, maybe. I yeah. Think? It wasn't that long ago. I know that I remember. Yeah. Recently uh, hearing that. Um, but I mean, not only, you know, those two films, I mean, 12 Angry Men, um, you know, he's uh, uh, even did, uh, the, I think his last film was Before the Devil Knows You're Dead uh, with uh, uh, another, the late great uh, 
Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, great director. Um, so yes, yeah, Serpico, uh, Al Pacino. I know you're a big Al Pacino guy, but uh, why, why uh, first of all, why this film out of uh, all the other Al Pacino films did you pick? Man, um, there was just something like, like when I first saw this movie, it was, it was so cool. Like the wardrobe, the setting, uh, and the fact that he, he goes from completely clean shaven to this long haired hippie beard, like, because they shot it in reverse order, which is a great idea. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you have to. I would think. So. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have to wait for him to like grow the beard yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, they, <laughs> grow, was, they, they actually gradually shaved him. Cause he like had a beard, then a goatee, then a <laughs> mustache, Yeah, uh, obviously in reverse order in the film, it goes in order of mustache, goatee, beard, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's one yeah. of his fine, finest films. I mean, I, I think he's, I mean, Dog Day Afternoon is my favorite, but yeah. Serpico is way up there. Um, and I don't know. There's just some some of the scene. There's like some really short scenes that are just they just pull you in. Still, like there's a I think one. There's a scene where he's feeding his his uh, his parakeet or his uh, his bird, and his girlfriend's in the bed, and he's just feeding the bird in the in the middle of the dark. And I'm just like, that's such a beautiful looking scene. It's just yeah. He's just standing there, and the bird's just grabbing the food. And... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie subtle. has this movie has a realism to it that I liked, mm-hmm. and it's I mean it's classic like early mid seventies realism, right? And it, like right away from the beginning, when we get that shot where our main character has been sh- shot in the face, and yeah, when they're going right around back, like yeah. it, it, you know th- with the cop car into the hospital, the handheld stuff, it looks it, it's doesn't look good it looks like like gritty and dirty it's not not mm-hmm. all of it is beautiful and then you get like those those nice those nice moments um and that's i mean that's this stuck out to me like when everyone anyone says that style of 70s like this this one this movie i think fits it to a t yeah yeah because you have um it, it i was totally you know I, I always get um la confidential vibes which obviously came after this which yeah. i assume you know assume was uh, you know, they drew inspiration. I would, I would think from from this, uh, you know, subject matter at least. Um, you know, with corrupt cops and everything, and that's set in L.A. where it's like glamour and all this. Where this is more of a like grimy, dirty yeah. New York, you know, version. Doesn't look of like any that. place I want to live. Right. Yeah. yeah. I still want. I still wanted to live in his little like uh, place, though. I thought. I don't know. I just thought that was like a little cool spot. That little like, neighborhood was good, but like everything outside yeah. of it felt well because he went to Greenwich Village, right? He like specifically yeah. went there like for a little bit of culture and stuff like that. He wanted to get out of his out of his neighborhood. He didn't. He's such an odd bird. And actually, this is the first time I've watched this film all the way through. I've seen parts of it, and I never quite got it. Mm. I thought I always thought the the costumes and stuff was him. Or at least when I my perception of it was from the parts I saw. I think I saw I think I saw maybe the back half. I think I always thought he was undercover, but mm-hmm. not really. This is just him. He's oh, just yeah. He's just this, he's kind of his own per he's he's his own man and he's never really comfortable in any situation he's in. He always feels like it's like oppressing him in some way or is not able to like completely be himself and it's it's such a strange thing to choose being a cop but even that scene is is it, the way he describes why he wanted to be a cop was awesome i thought oh the uh the scene where he's um where he's talking to his uh i think it's his is it his first girlfriend yeah and he's and he's opening the bottle of wine yeah that scene, oh, great scene. yeah 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 it's, it's just it's such an easy simple scene to shoot like it's just there's no movement. The camera's still. Yeah. And those are beautiful scenes. Like when you don't have to, you don't have to go in for close ups and stuff like that. I mean, just let it, let it breathe and, yeah. And let Pacino do what Pacino does. I love well, how she was it, giving it, him a massage. It was yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I yeah, I think it was a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, um, that's, that's in the same scene. It's like a, yeah. But I don't think that does the camera, it doesn't. Yeah. 
it doesn't cut though, does it? I think it. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's all one shot, which is I always <laughs> love. It's just yeah, just uh, um, yeah, great. And yeah, because because he says he wants to be a cop because when he was a kid, like there was a crowd and like the cops knew everything. I think yeah. was like, it's like the, I wanted to know what idea. do they know? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't yeah. even really about being a cop. It was more about like yeah, talking solving to the microphone, puzzles yeah. and like mm-hmm. having an understanding of how the world around him worked. Like, and that he thought was his way of getting that knowledge, which I thought was interesting. It wasn't, had really nothing to do with like enforcing the law. You know, that wasn't like his primary motivation or keeping order or something like that. He just like, to him, it was like intellectual. And he was so, uh, you know, disappointed to find out, you know, <laughs> like every fucking borough that he went to was corrupt. Like he, he couldn't, he couldn't find uh, anybody that was clean. And this, yeah, guy, he yeah. just. I think it. I think that's why his personal life was so. You know, it didn't work out with the women because he was so involved in trying to be the perfect cop, the best, like the most honest, and that's why his relationships yeah. never worked because he put the he put his job before he put uh, above his personal life. Well, because yeah. you know he he wanted to know what the what the cops knew. You know they knew everything, but then he ends up finding out things that he probably didn't want to find out. You know, it's it's you know that uh, interesting juxtaposition there. You know, it's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, d- definitely you know uh, a dilemma. You know, he has to he has to live with knowing this stuff. And it's like, man, this is this is what I signed up for. Um, and uh, the, alive, yeah. yeah yeah exactly the, uh, i was thinking I, I didn't well so the second there's two girls in this i don't know if the he, i don't think he married either one of them at least in the movie right they were just girlfriends living girlfriends yeah. in um, real life he married him uh oh, he did okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was interesting i think she, he was getting pressure from the second one to i think because she tells the story about the the mad the wise king or something like that and and it was sort of like <laughs> it was like a poisoned well and everybody drank with the king and they all said he was crazy. And then finally he drank from the well and they all thought he was saying, I think that was her way of telling him to, to just go along, right. Partake, go take the money. Yeah, I was, right. I was going to ask you guys interpret about that. that. No, I was going to ask you guys the same thing. Yeah. What are, so what are your he's, thoughts, he's getting it from all uh-huh. ends. It probably would have made uh, his life easier had he just taken the money. But exactly. Um, but, but the easiest way isn't always the right way, right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, yeah, I mean, that's the yeah main theme of this movie. Yeah, it's just you know, it's um, you know, am I doing this just to get the 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 medals and the you know the you know the status and everything you know that get get that status symbol, but. You know, it's it's about right and wrong for him, and it's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 such an interesting character study, you know, with in such a dilemma, you know, he goes through, uh, and then back back to the wardrobe. Yeah, I, I was definitely thinking, you know, <laughs> I, I think some of it was undercover because at one point he like comes in as like a rabbi. Yeah, um, that was the yeah. funniest part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just like, yeah. Whoa, what is happening? I I was getting like. Uh, <laughs> Like man, his beard got really long. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I was getting Fletch vibes with Chevy Fletch, Chase. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like just <laughs> dressing as different uh, uh, characters. Because yeah, he was dressed as a rabbi or you know whatever, and then uh, dressed as like a butcher type mm-hmm. person yeah. when he catches the one guy. That was great. And <laughs> it's just yeah, and you know that's like Pacino running and all that. Stuff. I mean. It, I can't see that with stunt people. I think that's all him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a and how he fast is down... he? Holy crap! He is, is yeah. he fast? <laughs> he's he's fast. And I was thinking, there's one where he chases a guy down the stairs, and it looked like he twisted his ankle on his way down the stairs. Did you guys? I don't know if you guys caught that. I was like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you he's know, like or, uh, another down. guy. Was it the guy he was chasing that twisted his ankle? No, I think I thought it was. Uh, it looked to me like it was Pacino, and he was chasing him down. I think it was the one where he was. Uh, he had the. I forget what we one where he almost got shot. I think on his way to that when the just before that he went down this like two flights of of concrete stairs, and it looked like he was like running so fast he like wow 
twisted his ankle and then just kept going because you know he's a pro. Yeah, I I, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever impulse uh, bought a dog for five dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I would totally buy a dog for five dollars if I have my own place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought for sure they were gonna rip him off. Those two, yeah. those two looked suspect to me. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that. I don't know if that was a choice that they made, but yeah, when he gets the dog, and he walks off, you know, he's like, "Which one of which one of you dogs do I want?" And I, I have to feel that that's you know Pacino just in the in the scene and just yeah. kind of doing his thing. Like I doubt that's in the script. Like which one of you dogs, you know. You, that doesn't need to be in the scene. That doesn't need to be in the script. That you can have fun with that stuff. Yeah. Um, and he picks the dog, and then he walks off, and uh, and she gives and she gives a look to the guy like or something yeah. like like they're gonna steal his stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But he so was so trustworthy. Totally... He was like, "Hey, can you watch my uh, can you watch my stuff for me? I'm gonna maybe uh, move it in here." <laughs> That's a great impression because he's he's laying the he's laying something on the the accent. He talks a little different in this movie than like in almost anyone. He was yeah. like he was doing something there. Yeah. I don't know if that was his, I don't know what it was. It just yeah. But you know, I wonder because they said, does he have like this aura about him? Because his earlier were um, I forget where it was he was with another cop and something happened. He's like you're you you're like a jinx. Does he have? Is that like what they're trying to say? Like, well, so when he interacts with people, he's like, he's just like good. He's like, yeah. He, there, there's a goodness to him that, like, he's, oh yeah, he's got a genuineness to him when he's like yeah. around. But it actually affects know. like the stuff going on around him. Like, so when he interacts, I, I think those people are gonna rip him off. Maybe they saw his goodness and it stopped them. And then the other one where. I forget. I can't remember the scene, but he was with a cop. He called him a jinx. I think so he was going to get money or something like that. And Pacino shows up and then like the thing stopped. I, I'm I'm doing a horrible job. No, of explaining no. It, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, too. Yeah, there. Remember that. Uh, yeah. We called him a jinx. Him a, and I, yeah, and I, <laughs> just felt like he like foiled bad stuff. And then like Pacino, brought, Pacino called him a jinx. The, the cop called Pacino a jinx for showing up. I'm sorry. I should just drop this. But <laughs> no, it's it's all right. It was his partner. I, I, he called him a jinx. And I, don't, I forget what the scenario was. And it kind of ruined whatever the guy was doing. And it was a yeah. bad thing. Um, I just can't remember. Oh, it was like a, like a collecting money kind of thing. It might have been. Yeah. But you just kind of got the sense that he had an, like an aura that actually it wasn't just like his own character. It, it like affected the world around him. Um, that's so, that's kind of how yeah. I read it. <clears throat> no, definitely. Um, so, 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 yeah, I mean, the, the, you got the you, know, you mean, the main corruption, it seems to be this the cops taking money, um, which is a shitload. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> is that not a, it's not like a few bucks here and there. It's like no, hundreds it's, of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's like $120,000 or something, yeah. I think. Back yeah. in 1973, right? You know, like, oh my Yeah, God. that's. <laughs> and he's, he's like, I'm just going to keep it in this envelope if you change your mind. One of them was like, and it's just like, I don't know why. I just, when I saw the movie the first time, I. I never thought he was going to take the money anyways. Like I knew from it, there's just something about Serpico where he just, it didn't matter. He was never going to take the money. Yeah. He yeah. Never did. Yeah. Like it's definitely one of those movies where it's like, okay, this is like one of those hero movies where you, yeah. you know, Serp, you know, Frank Serpico is, is it's not in him to do it. Yeah. yeah exactly. there, was, there was no urge or anything to take it, which was, yeah. he's not like even on a, I don't even see him as like a crusader by choice. If it was up to him, like, cause he doesn't really, he judges the, the guys for doing it, but I don't think he's really mad at them individually. He's just mad about it as a system. Yeah. You know, well, because he, he brings that up at the end, you know, we got to start at the top. Like, why is this being allowed to happen? You know, right. you know, with the uh, commissioner and everything, or yeah, because I think that's what he's saying at the end, you know, in that uh, press conference or whatever you want to call it, you know, he's basically he's not saying, preachy. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not like holier than thou. He's just like I don't, I don't, I don't need it. I don't want to do it. This is not what I'm here for. And to me, it just does, just doesn't feel right. You know, do it, I guess, if you want. Don't involve me. I don't want any part of it. And then when he realizes that it it, it actually affects. He can't do anything to get it to stop, no matter what. You're going in outside sources? <laughs> the whole outside <laughs> sources. <laughs> but like even then it doesn't work. He goes and talks to talks to the mayor. The commissioner apparently, you know, never gonna talk to him. And then finally, I love 
when they when they bring him in and then and uh then into the stable and the I guess I don't know who it was his captain or whatever he's like oh the higher ups from here are here to talk to you and he's afterwards like fuck man what are you 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 just told everybody that I'm going yeah. to talk to these guys. They know what it's about. You're, you're trying you're trying to kill me, and then that's what it literally becomes about his survival, which I like too. Yeah. Not just about him trying to expose something. He's like he never knows when he's going to get a bullet in the face. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I can't believe uh, that actually happened in real life. I know. <laughs> I know. That's that's the yeah crazy thing about this too is yeah this is a true story. You know it's a it's a, something that really happened. And I uh, looked it up and uh, Sir, Frank Serpico still alive today. He is uh, eighty six wow. years old. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there you go. He's uh, still alive. So is Pacino, which is great. Can still get greatness out of him. Um, I love, I'm looking at some quotes here. Uh, I love this one. Uh, the reality is that we do not wash our own laundry. It just gets dirtier. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, a great, uh, Chinatown vibe almost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's China, you know, it's, it's Chinatown, you know, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, didn't you guys love how, cause we said how like, um, Ser- Serpico and, and Pacino really the way he, it felt so natural to him, uh, um, to be, wearing those outlandish outfits. How bad did he look as a rookie cop wearing the uniform? He looked like a five-year-old. <laughs> something that didn't fit him. He was so out of place. In it. I was like, it's Michael from The Godfather. Yeah, right. yeah, right. <laughs> like, no, this is wrong. This is all wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because, yeah, Michael, you know, him is the, Godf- the Godfather wearing his uh, military uniform. Like, he looked, like, very, you know, pristine mm-hmm. and, you know, well, well dressed, but you know, when he's wearing the cop uniform, it's like, what, what is this little guy doing? What, what, what is he? Yeah, do? it just doesn't look like a cop. But I think that's a credit to him. He like a great actor will do that. Like he's gregarious when he's in his full beard, and it's, I don't even know what that hat is. Um, but right. like when he's in that uh, that that patrolman like a, uniform, he's like a almost fedora. Yeah. Yeah, like a big fedora that he had, I think. Yeah, fedora, yeah. <laughs> it's a crazy. Well, and he, he kept wearing those like bucket hats type of thing that were like yeah. totally like pulled down too. Like I thought it what, was like a like a um a Gilligan hat, but with the brim down. But I wasn't sure. Yeah, <laughs> is that what I don't know? What's a bucket hat? It might. I, I don't know. Maybe that. that's a bucket hat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, they, like 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 a Gilligan hat, but yeah, with it all like, folded, <laughs> definitely. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dude, Kevin, we're, as, all, we're all wearing blue. Did you notice this? Uh, was, uh, man, we just are in sync. We have guitars behind us. We're wearing blue. We are, we are, uh, you know, wow. I'm, miss, I'm missing the lightning game for you, Kevin. You know, it's just, you know, this is, this is how we roll. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about long shots <laughs> earlier. Um, and uh, I just am curious as an actor, like, when when there's uh you know it's going to be a scene where there's it's a longer shot and there's not going to be a cut or anything is that uh, i know as viewers we love it as directors they they love it but like as an actor is it put more pressure on you is it more stressful like how do you feel about that as an actor you, you mean like a wide, like a wide shot or just or a just long, like a continuous shot yeah like a long continuous shot oh i i like those i mean that's yeah. uh yeah, I mean, there's you got you got room to breathe and yeah, yeah. I think some of those are the best shots. Is it is it kind of like you're you, you can almost like feel each other out, it, almost like a play? I guess you could you could you could say you know because it's, it's yeah, you don't uh, have to hit your mark. You know, it's uh, yeah because everybody's in the shot and you can just play um yeah like the like the scene um i mean there's there's a number of them in serpico but the scene where he's like walking across the streets early in the movie and the fire hydrants and they're playing in the water yeah he like runs across and it's like a long it's like a yeah it's it's to run across and yeah you know he doesn't have to worry about hitting a certain mark it's a nice wide shot and yeah I feel like we're making Kevin uncomfortable <laughs> because we're yeah. asking him about his craft. <laughs> and I know actors don't like to like to, to give away what, what they're feeling in the moment because they feel weird. But <laughs> Oh no, I'm good with that. You, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put my foot on the gas. Do you have, is there like a role, a, a, 
just an outline of a of is there a thing that you would love to play? Is there a character, a scenario, a thing where you're like, you know, I think I think I can nail that. Do you, do you have like a general? Do you think about that or not? I, I don't know. I'm always curious. Or are you I just looking I, for a job? Just, want to just, just hire me. <laughs> yeah, just hire me. Um, I think I'd I'd be really good at the uh, the guy who you think is a good guy, but he ends up being the bad guy. Yeah. Like I was told I could probably do that really well uh, I because I do have like an innocent look. Yeah. Right. But deep yeah. down you're a menace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I'm hard. just curious, like, you know, what, what, what keeps you, what keeps you going? Like everyone, you know, you have that bug in your, you have that passion. Like, so is that like, what is, when you're up at night and you're thinking about your career and your passion and you know, what you want to, the mark you want to leave. I mean, is that, are those the kinds of things you think about or you, is it just more mundane? I'm just, I'm just curious. You'd... No, I mean, it's, I mean, the beauty in the, uh, in the acting business is like, there's no, there's no ceiling, you know, you're, you're always, you know, reaching for that next level yeah, uh, and learning something new every time you're on set and, and just like, you know, humans evolve, like the more we evolve, it's gonna, it'll show on camera, uh, kind of deal. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, it uh, does. Yeah. yeah. Is Pacino your biggest influence or do you have, or do you have others? Uh, it's Pacino and Hoffman probably still. Yeah. Um, but I love, uh, I love Ryan Gosling too. I think he's a great, yeah. you know, doesn't do much like he doesn't do a lot and it's and it comes across beautifully like it's uh yeah like blue valentine's one of my favorite films too i love Good that movie. movie yeah can you I, can can you watch uh just last one and then i'll go to bed <laughs> you, no this can is just you a watch conversation a movie like, dave you know can, this can, is... can you watch a movie like a like a regular person like because i think sometimes we i mean just this is really low level, but we, we, Ben and I, you know, we do, we talk movies, so we kind of have a, a critical eye when we watch, but you, you, you've done it. You've been in it. Can you like divorce yourself from your craft when you watch stuff or do you always have your eye on the production, what the actor's doing technique and all that stuff? I try uh, when I watch something the first time, just to enjoy it, uh, you know, for the art and just watch. Yeah. And then like, the second or third time, if I really like the movie and I want to watch it again, then I'll probably, then I'll, you know, look at like what kind of shot that was or, uh, you know, um, what the choices that the actors chose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you say lines, do you, will you hear something and be like, and like say the line in a different way or something like that? Um, I feel like I'm. I, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah. It's it's interesting. I, I mean, I could see how it's hard to answer for sure. I mean, like it's like he's gonna know, keep but, asking me these questions. So. Yeah. I like. <laughs> no. I like. Uh, like if I'm watching it for a third or fourth time, to see. You know, I watch one actor in the scene specifically. Yeah. And put myself in their shoes, mm-hmm. and react, and see if they're reacting to the same lines that I'm reacting to. Like if the other, when the other person's talking to the actor that I'm paying attention to as I am them, I know this is very weird. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll see if I can pick up the beats that he's picking up. Um, yeah. Because, you know, kind of like when you're like holding your breath, like when some, like as us who aren't actors, like you hold your breath when someone else is holding their breath in the film. Like, are you like, is that kind of where you're getting at, or am I might? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, up? I don't know. <laughs> no, um, like if like if the uh, if your scene partner is saying something, and there's clearly something that they say that should trigger you, yeah, like a, that's a beat. Uh, it's cool to know that I picked that up just as well as Al, Al Pacino picked it up. Yeah, just like I picked it up. Okay, cool. Right. So. And then that's oh, like, yeah. you know, kind of analyzing, almost like analyzing a script, except you're you're watching it in real time and you're seeing what their choices were. And if they saw the beat that you saw, 
Yeah, like you, you're you're it. thinking like, uh, okay, this is what I would, how I would uh, act, how this per, you know, like say a character asks a question or mm-hmm. the tense scene, and then you're kind of anticipating what the uh, other character is going to say. As an actor, you're like, oh, this is how I would play it. Yeah. Let's see if they you're do trying to recreate that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> And the best yeah, acting is the acting that you can't see, really. I mean, it's just yeah. like, like that's that's the whole that's the holy grail. I mean, that's uh, yeah. it, like the there's a great scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie, and it's a short scene. It's early when he's uh, when he's clean shaven still, and they catch the guys who are about to rape the girl in the park. Yeah. Yep. Um, and he grabs, I think it's the next day, and they're and they're coming out to go into the bus. And he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take him across the street and get some coffee. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So he goes across the street and the dude's just looking out, and Pacino's just grabbing coffee, gives him a coffee, and he's talking at the same time. And it's just he's looking right at him. Like there it's 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 just yeah, it's like he doesn't look away. It's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, uh, yeah. It's like, like he wasn't talking. It's like Pacino was talking to the the actor. Yeah. Like the subtext was like, um, maybe something like you're in the big leagues, man. You're in a scene with me. Let's do this. Okay. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. Watch watch me work. (laughs) He's coming off probably the biggest movie ever at that point. Godfather, you know? So it's like, (laughs) like, come on, you're talking to Michael Corleone here. Come on. (laughs) And You know, of all actors, he, he sheds his entire like natural persona. Um, Mm -hmm. And like you said, Kevin, he, He's in there. He's, you know, he's doing the coffee. He's having his conversation. He's not, he's like completely free in the moment. He will do or say anything, whatever the movie needs him to do. And it just leaves Pacino aside and, you know, does whatever this character has to be. And that's why I think it's, like you said, you don't know, you don't really notice it because, but you feel it or you, you get to it when you watch. Like I get, I get one in that scene, like, like that, I get a feeling, which is, I, like I'm almost doing the same thing. I've, I've I've left all the other things that are going on outside within my room. They're all gone. I'm now in this moment kind of thing. And that's, what's so great about it. Like think had they done uh, that scene where they're in the coffee shop and it was like a close up of Pacino, you know, and then it cuts to his face, you know, to get his reaction. And then it cuts back to Pacino and you don't see them messing with the coffee or anything. It just, I don't know. It, it makes it, it just doesn't, Yeah. it doesn't live as much there. Like I, I think the fact that it, that you get to see the mundaneness of just him grabbing coffee and still being in the scene. Right. It's really hard. Like when you have to work with, when you're working with props, man, it can be difficult. Uh, you have to, to make it natural. Speaking like, of that. Yeah. I mean, that kind of brings me back to, uh, when, uh, you know, I've heard, you know, I'm sure many of us have heard the old story of, uh, the scene in the Godfather at the very beginning when Marlon Brando is, you know, talking to people at his daughter's wedding, like Francis Ford Coppola was like, ah, something's not working. And he puts a cat on uh, <laughs> yeah. Marlon Brand- Brando's lap, like, like some like, you know, lower, you know, uh, uh, skilled actors might like be totally focused on that and almost it might be a vice for them whereas like marlon brando was just able to make it work like it was just like okay you like you're not threatened by him because he has a cat but you know what he can do like it's like that kind of prop yeah type of thing you know and he's in um, contr- he's in total control because anyone who's yeah. had a cat on their lap knows that a cat sometimes might just want to bolt but that cat right. yeah. that cat never went anywhere that cat was just <laughs> It was just as in the moment as all of us is viewing, which is like it, that is total command. I love that. It's, I'm glad you brought that up, Ben. Yeah, I love, I love the scene. Um, back to the scene uh, where he's pouring the wine and talking about why he became a cop. Yeah, like if you notice, it's obviously it's all one shot. When he pours the first drink, he's still t- he's talking while he's doing all this, and. He pours that second drink, and it's a perfect like. They're both. <laughs> yeah, he's got it perfect. <laughs> they're both perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. 
It's beautiful. It's like, ah, you're remembering your lines and it's not just coming off as line reading. It's coming off as just realness. Mm-hmm. And yet you're still able to multitask like this. And it's just, yeah, sometimes it's just like I'm in awe of actors, you know, just in general. Like, it's just like, I don't know how. <laughs> that's, here, that's like classes. I mean, he yeah. well, he studied with the... Uh, um, uh, Lee Strasberg. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Who he, who he finally, you know, the story about Lee Strasberg and uh, the Godfather too. I don't think so. Because he was the main bad. Well, he was like the bad guy. I can't remember the character's name, but he was in Florida and he was the one. Um, yeah. Iron Roth. Yeah. Yes. I'm in, if you leave yeah. me the money here, I know I have a partner. If not, that's right. I yes. know I don't. Yes. That's Lee Strasberg. Yeah. Yeah. And he had to beg. He was like, I, you got to be in this movie. And he had to beg Lee Strasberg to, to be, take that part. And here's someone oh, who, who teaches and then yeah. he actually does it. And he does it it's so good in that movie. And he was nominated yeah. for an Oscar for that, yeah, Lee yeah. Strasberg. It's great. Oh, so great. And not to go totally uh, off base, but have any of you watched The Offer yet? Uh, the. Yeah, I was gonna say the cat singing. I was like, "Have you watched that yet?" Okay, I is haven't. Good? I haven't so, seen it. Okay, oh. so they obviously they well, mentioned that about, at yeah. some point. Yeah, they talk about yeah. the cat scene, and <laughs> but it's so funny because after they do that, uh, after they shoot that scene, I think they're looking at the dailies, and then the studio heads are like, "He was mumbling, and all we saw, and all we." And all we were focused on was a fucking cat. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they were talking about how he had to, you know, he he didn't have his lines memorized. Um, right. I don't know how he right. did what he and one and like he's Marlon Brando is one of the most amazing actors of all time. And there's pictures online, I think, of uh, Robert Duvall, and he's got like his lines. Yeah. On him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you do that. And he made it natural and and you don't even notice it. Well, even uh, I think there, uh, you know, I've seen, you know, so many documentaries on Godfather. I think even at one point, like he put like post-it notes uh, or, you know, cue cards on uh, Mm -hmm. Luca, Luca Brazzi's forehead. I think (laughs) they said like, (laughs) I'm I'm pretty sure they talk about that in in the offer and they, and they show, you know, that he puts the the cotton balls in his mouth because they come to his house because they really like Coppola, like uh, the writer of the Godfather sees Marlon Brando as the Don and they got to find a way to get him to be in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, does the shoe polish thing, slicks his hair back puts the cotton balls in his mouth and they're just like, holy shit. Yeah. Who, who, that's the who, guy. Uh, who plays Marlon Brando in that? Uh, oh man. I can't remember his name. He was, he was on like, uh, Justin Chambers. It looks Justin Chambers. Yeah. He, he was, he was in, in um, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. yeah Grey's Anatomy. He was a doctor, but you can okay. see how he kind of looks like a young Marlon Brando. Yeah, yeah definitely. So good yeah. show. Recommend. I love it. Yeah. yeah the, I think the right, final episode is tomorrow. So, um, nice. Sp- speaking of Godfather, uh, this is, <laughs> this is the <laughs> second, the second, the second movie in a row where El Pacino gets a huge old, you know, uh, injury to his cheek, you know, in the Godfather, obviously he gets, you know, punched in the face and has like a swollen cheek. And in this, he gets shot in the cheek. Uh, I think, it, and I want to say it's opposite cheeks too. So, that's uh, an interesting uh, comparison there. Yeah, sounded, um, the voice would like sound the same when when he got his mouth wired shut. It's kind of yeah, kind of kind of dark, yeah, yeah. I love that scene, you know, at the end in the, in the hospital, you know, because I mean, oh, he doesn't, you know, read the, read the cards to me. Remember when he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, like did he already read the cards? Did he know what those? I'm sure he knew what those cards already said, and he was yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I yep. like, yeah, yeah, read, yeah, read, read my uh, fan mail, fan, my fan, and, yeah, like <laughs> the people crossing out, like, yeah, like get well, basically saying go die, like the the price he paid for 
trying to get the truth out and expose this police corruption is just, yeah. you know, uh, again, the ultimate hero story. You're not, you're not going to do the easy thing. You know, it's, it, it's easy to take the money. It's easy to just, mm -hmm. you know, when everyone uh, in your life, turn is the other cheek, just do you it, know? go along. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. admirable. And yeah, what about, what about F Murray Abraham is was, in it yeah. for like a minute or two. And he's in that final scene where, you know, he gets shot. Yeah, he's I know. He's uncredited in the movie, apparently. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just actually looking for him on IMDb, and I was like, I didn't want to mention it in case that wasn't really him, cause, because that <laughs> totally looks like him. But yes, it's it's him. Um, yeah, they yeah, did it was, in a way where... Was before, before Scarface, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just love that. I, I kind of love the way they just set Serpico Talking up. to the mic, Dave. Oh, I love the way they set Serpico <laughs> up to die, you know? <laughs> Because yeah. that's what they would have done. They wouldn't. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have done it directly. They just set the circumstance up for him. And oh, that, there's a, there's a lot of tension. He's trying to fight his way through the door. He's screaming mm -hmm. for them to help, and they're just gonna stand there and wait. As soon as this gun goes off, then they then they go busting in. Oh, it's a big accident, you know. Uh, well, how, you, how do you survive like a shot to the like? I, I, don't, I, know. I don't even know how you do that. At, like, ask, I guess it's because the bullet cent. was small. That's right. That's right. right. His cheek. Yeah. <laughs> So if it was a bigger bullet, because they even mentioned it in the movie. Yeah. If it was a, I don't know a lot about bullets, but mm -mm. like the caliber, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. caliber or something. Maybe it was just lodged in his in his cheekbone or something. I, I don't know. Because it was a small, it was a small hole, which meant, I guess the bullet was small. Yeah. I see, right. Yeah. They, they, I think they said something about the bullet, like it being small shrapnel or whatever you mm -hmm. call it. Like it's crazy. And yeah. It must've just, I thought they said how it missed his, but, but yeah, I mean, they, they basically set up the movie to make you think that a cop's going to do it, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's going to shoot him in the face. But even that scene though, so, so much tension, like he's trying to push open the door, his hand squeezing through. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, it, it's so realistic because, you know, I've tried to like squeeze my hand through things like to try to get like fix a car or, you know, fix, <laughs> oh, not that I'm a car guy or anything, but, you know, just trying to do something around the house and like squeezing your hand behind something and it's like kind of scratching it. And that's like the feeling I got when he's like squeezing his hand through the door and, you know, it's just like, why aren't you guys helping me? And then, yeah, you know, he, he, yeah, he, he obviously comes to the realization like, okay, yeah, I know why they're not helping me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, it's, it ends up being a criminal that shoots him in the face. But yeah. that's what the cops wanted, you know? That way, you know, they're scot-free. You know, they could make up a story and... Mm -hmm. um, what, 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 why do, why do we think, I mean, I, again, don't know, just talking about a movie, a story, not talking about the real story, but why, why do we think, uh, the cops actually took him back and tried to save him? You I know, because didn't, didn't they leave him on the steps? Didn't they leave? Did they not leave? I thought so. But like in the beginning, he's obviously driving in a car. I, I, kind of, I want to watch the beginning again to see who's in the car. If it's a F Murray Abraham, uh, or not. Um, cause yeah, I mean, they definitely leave him. So yeah, maybe someone else comes and maybe it's the, his cop friends, like the, his very few allies he has, maybe they show up. I don't know. Twitter, let us know. Uh, internet, let us know <laughs> what, uh, what, what we're missing here. I kind of thought, well, they do have a, as bad, well, as corrupt as they are. And as much as they don't want to get in trouble, they still, I think there's, even underneath that and above that, well, that makes no sense. But something, is, something also important is not leaving a man behind and their duty to a fellow officer. So mm -hmm. I kind of thought they were like, we'll leave him to die and he'll just, he's dead. He's shot in the face. Yeah. But they can't, it would be far worse for them for if they literally had just, if no one had gotten him. Um, yeah. That would be, th 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 that's, like the, that's like the sin of the sin. That's worse than taking money. Oh, maybe they went back. To, well, I mean, this was back in the seventies, so maybe they had to go back down to the car and and on the AP. What do you call it? Like it's like yeah, the, like the radio or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. They didn't yeah, have cell phones, them. obviously, and stuff. So they right, had to. Yeah, <laughs> they had to call somebody. They had to go back to the car. So that's yeah. probably what they did. Yeah, but I, I think even that would have been. I guess my point is, it would have been even too low for any any cop to let him sit there and die. And yeah, because uh, I mean, essentially, yeah, I mean. I, you know, obviously it's corrupt, but you know, they're, they're taking money. You know, that's what we do. We take money, you know, didn't they, um, but they, when he got shot, didn't they go inside and they did right away. Yeah. And 
did they like take the bad guys downstairs or something? I can't yeah. remember. That's what they, they did. Went after them at least. I, I yeah, because they yeah they, they brought uh, they, said, they brought them out. And yeah. then, I, then I think they went back to get Serpico after after they brought the bad guy or the bad guy. I don't know the guy who shot Serpico down. <laughs> the bad guys, drug dealer. I guess that's what it was, right? It was a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he was in narcotics. They brought point. the drug dealer down, then went back and got Serpico, and then, but it happened. No, actually, no, Christ, now I'm thinking about it. Because in the beginning, he's getting brought in at night, but the shooting happens during the day, right? Yeah, I wonder if that was uh, something they just couldn't avoid, maybe like shooting wise. It, okay. That did seem a little weird, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that is, I'm, try, is I'm looking at the uh, Wikipedia plot uh, doesn't give me <laughs> <details>. <laughs> during a drug during a drug arrest Serpico is shot in the face when his backup fails to act. He recovers, though, with <laughs> lifelong effects from <laughs> his wound. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that doesn't help us. <laughs> but I love when, it, you know, the the um, uh, I don't know if it's the commissioner or what it tries to give him the shield and he's like, I don't want it like yeah. the, that's the last thing I want. Like, this is not what this has been about. Like, I'm being betrayed, betrayed no matter what. Like, you know, shove it up your ass, essentially, is what he <laughs> says. You know, because he says, like, shove it, you know, shove it, I think he says. But then he, um, he, he, he puts it on his chest again, and he's like, okay, fuck it. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, whatever. <laughs> By the way, um, I actually thought this movie was setting this up for a death, even though I guess you, everybody, it, well, people probably heard of Serpico before, and it was true stories that we knew he wasn't dead. But I thought the movie set this up for a tragic, heroic death. This mm-hmm. is a man who was killed by the system. And so I was... I mean, not knowing too much about reality, that's kind of where my, my mind went, movie going. So it was, it was nice yeah. to... I didn't know when I first saw this movie that it was a true story. Uh, I, and the first scene you see is Serpico has been shot and yep. he's got a hole in his face. And you're like, well, that just got interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that, huh, interesting way to How start. How does this happen? I guess we'll Definitely see. Another, uh, you know, uh, in retrospect now, because uh, I, I, I saw Reservoir Dogs before I saw this. Uh, it brought me back to, you know, obviously movies who, that take inspiration from other movies. I got to assume at mm. least that Quentin Tarantino maybe got inspiration from Serpico to, you the know, car? do the flashback. Yeah. And, you know, all, uh-huh. you know, we're about to go on this heist, but oh, he shot. What happened? Like, and then they, you know, do the whole time jump. Uh, I don't know if that's, you know, where Tarantino got it, but you, it. You, well, yeah. you can't help but think that. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, look, I think I will say, you know, on these two, looking at Dog Day Afternoon and this movie, while I like this movie, I think Dog Day Afternoon is a way better film. Um, but I would also say that I think Serpico was more influential, to Ben's point. I think you'll see the stuff that happened in this movie pop up in other things, the corrupt cops the or just the way things were shot, like the time jump with being shot in the car, stuff like that. Um did you guys agree with that? Or yes, <laughs> oh, the yeah. afternoon is better. No, too, no right? yeah, I mean, yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Because I like this movie, but I don't. I don't know. Just to be honest, I don't know that I would consider this a, a great film. I think it's a great performance and a good story, but I, I don't know that I'll ever see this movie again. As much as I like it, or enjoyed watching it, rather. I, the movie's good, but it's Pacino's performance uh, yeah. that. That makes me watch it for like a third or fourth time, probably. Yeah, yeah, like him weeping in the bed, you know, in the hospital bed at the end, like that is just like that's the one of the yeah best things, you know, best uh, moments of Pacino I've I've seen. You know, it's just like he's just like I I went through all this and like for what a medal, you know, it's just like come on, like uh, yeah. I'm a good guy, like I just didn't take the money. I, I didn't want to take the money. <laughs> I it's, just didn't it. do a bad like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just, man, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And, you know, and he ends up uh, moving to Switzerland, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. just get me perfect, away from it all. <laughs> the perfect dog to move to Switzerland with. That right. Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're Switzerland is neutral. So I would assume that, you know, he's not going to be getting any, I, I thought I read something into that about, him. you know, I'm going to a neutral country where, I can just live my life, you know, kind of a thing. Cause that's kind of what he was. And, you know, we didn't even talk about when he met, when he met the ballet chick 
and mm-hmm. picks her up on a motorcycle. He went through this whole hippie phase. We didn't touch on it, which was fine. But I thought that was like some of the best parts of the movie. And he goes into the fingerprint lab where he is. And he's like he's telling the guy how he knows about ballet. It's hilarious and great. Yeah. And you actually get to understand what this character is all about. Now, he didn't really. I mean, we know that. He's just fucking around. Like he learned ballet from his girlfriend and he's going, to st- <laughs> he's so bored by his job and like right. he finds his outside life so much more interesting that he's just kind of willing to make a little bit of a fool of himself. Um, and then he gets busted for, because <laughs> the light was off and this commander thought he was having yeah. sex yeah. with the other cop. <laughs> you go, go going down the- on him, obviously, you know, why else would the light be <laughs> off, you know? The principal from... <laughs> Yeah, back, to the, back to the future, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's a whole like part of the of the movie we, we didn't even touch on. But I, I love him on the bike with the chick was awesome. I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah, and she's like, what is she like? Uh, she's holding him. And he's like, what is that gun or something like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I for, I, yeah, I forget what he responds. Yeah, I mean, obviously he admits that it's a gun, but yeah, I forget what he says. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, they go to that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. He's like, whoa, whoa, don't hold there. Yeah, hold. And then he grabs her hand and puts it around her, around his uh, waist. I love that. We just really quick running through the the stuff I really did like about the things I like. I almost liked the most about the movie was understanding the character, and it was uh, like that. And just you know, side things. And when they go to the party, and everyone's, it's like some crazy drug hippie party or something. I don't know, but. Everyone's introducing each other, and his, like his girlfriend's like, she's a, I don't know, she's a writer, but she actually, like, right now she's writing insurance claims, something like that. <laughs> this person's a, a novelist, but they, you know, work at the local dog pound. I don't know what it was, but, and then, then she introduces him as a cop, and he's like, yeah, you, you took offense by it because it's like, <clears throat> you're kind of not showing that same deference to me that you're showing to, because he, he feels like he's more than just a cop, he's got something else like to share to the world and just being a cop plus you know to that group being a police officer is like you know totally lame and square yeah, yeah. i thought yeah, that he, was really interesting he was having a lot of fun uh just interacting with people yeah um and not being a cop like, yeah like defined by what that means yeah yeah but yeah i mean it's yeah, definitely one of those films that uh, yeah has a good message and has a great hero in it. It's one of those yeah where I could see you know Frank Serpico going down as one of the great uh, heroes uh, in uh, cinema and all obviously in real history as well. So mm-hmm. uh, any uh, any final thoughts on Serpico, Kevin, that we uh, we didn't uh, touch on? Um, I think so. I think. Uh... I think, I think, I think we got it. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think we <laughs> covered it. I think we covered it. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm with you, Dave. Yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, and, and obviously, Kevin agrees because he said it's his favorite movie. Dog Day Afternoon is the better movie, but yeah, I mean, this is just outstanding performance by uh, Pacino in this, and yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, glad it's around. Glad it was made, and. Uh, Go see it, folks. If you haven't, we we gave away the whole movie. So there <laughs> yeah. you go. And Sunny and Philadelphia uh, fans, if you ever saw Charlie running around in the Serpico outfit, you'll know where all that came from and how it <laughs> came to be. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Um, but uh, but yeah, no man, I really appreciate you coming back on and talking you movies. Can. You're uh, welcome back anytime. Yeah. Where uh, where can people find you on social media and all that jazz? Yeah. Uh... Instagram is going to be the Kevin L Johnson and then Twitter is Kevin underscore L underscore Johnson. All those underscores. Love <laughs> it. Mr. Underscore. I know. Mr. Kevin L. John- I have to look and see who Kevin L Johnson is again. Cause it was taken. I remember that. Oh, oh bastard. You got to buy it from them. I think that's yeah. how people make their money is yeah, bully just selling, <laughs> selling uh, Twitter handles and all that. But yeah, uh, actually real quick, since we're on, uh, it's kind of topical. Top Gun Maverick uh, came out. Mm-hmm. You were in a movie with uh, Tom Cruise, American Maid. Did you have scenes with him? Yeah, my scene uh, was with him at the, uh, it was supposed to be like a montage when he was leaving the ho- the motels. Um 
It didn't make it into the movie though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But for some reason I'm in the credits. So I, hey. that's good. Take it. There, you, there I got go. residuals. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And hey, yeah, you, you got to work movie. with uh, Tom Cruise. So that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. He, or was he it was not nice cool? Guy. I don't know. No, yeah, he was a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, he didn't, uh, you know, he was also one of the producers and yeah. I mean, anything with Tom Cruise when he's on set, he's, pretty much the boss unless he's on set with steven spielberg or right yeah you know something like that it's a tom cruise movie yeah so definitely yeah but, uh, but yeah no, man that's you're, not a bad thing by the way yeah, not at all you're welcome <laughs> no. uh back anytime and uh, thanks so much for talking with us again absolutely thanks, guys appreciate it Well, there you have it, folks. Kevin L. Johnson on Serpico. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. Uh, And uh, yeah, make sure you're following him on Instagram and Twitter and all that jazz. And us as well at BlockbusterCast on Twitter, at BlockbusterMentality on Instagram, uh, BlockbusterMentality.com, where we talk to all the celebrities and and all that fun. Uh, We got a lot more episodes coming out. We're going to end 2022 strong. We're going to have a lot more episodes. 2022 started off a little slow, but hey, you know, we're human. We're going to, we're picking it up. We're picking up the pace. But uh, that is it for me, folks. For Dave and Kevin, I'm Ben. And as always, grab some popcorn, grab some snacks. We'll catch you guys at the movies. (laughs) 